What's up guys and welcome back to Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you a slightly bigger variety and hodgepodge of stuff to review for this week. So um, I did have a chance to catch up pretty much on Shogun. I got a, about like 10 or 15 minutes left in the latest episode, but I got some good things to say as we head into the season finale, I believe. I think there's only one more episode left, so I'm planning on double checking that and if it is watching that for next week's um, episode of podcast so that I can make sure I review that. But in addition to that, I had a chance to watch a couple of movies that I just had the uh, inkling to watch. I watched one of them and then wanted to watch another one, so um, I ended up watching them both. Um, That being said, the cover image for this week was, um, as has been the past couple of weeks, been generated in Google Gemini. It's an image of a Stargate in space with a mutant samurai. So that pretty much covers everything for this week. Um, So as far as Shogun goes, I'm not going to really give away too much, but overall I want to say that the past couple of episodes have been really, really good. Um, For me, it felt like the few episodes before had a little bit of a downturn. They were relatively slow. It's not like they didn't progress anything, but um, for me it just felt like there were two episodes when one could have been done um but in the past couple of episodes we have more of the story play out as far as the guy who was kicked out of the council um him executing his trick plan um some people knowing what's going on um other people not and that sort of stuff so these past two episodes uh, notably episodes not uh, eight and nine actually brought me fully back on board so I definitely recommend sticking through it and waiting for the season finale, which I hope rounds it out very nicely. Um, I also had a chance to watch Star Wars The Bad Batch, so episode 13 of season 3, Into the Breach. So we have a little bit more of Omega in the facility talking to the Doctor, trying to find her escape route and help, wanting to help them escape. Uh, we have The Bad Batch um, pro- still working with Rampart a little bit more and then going back to Coruscant as far as the space station to make their way to Tantis, so we'll see, or for all intents and purposes, it looks like they're going to Tantis, so we'll see if it works itself out, but then I got to thinking as far as my theory for the ending of um, Season 3 and like the series finale and all that, and I got to thinking that season, the ending of Season 3 is going to bring us right on par as far as learning about the Emperor's final plan as far as the final order goes, so he's gonna ultimately figure out that he can't clone himself so he's gonna clone a non-force using person to make his son who's gonna ultimately give birth to his daughter Rey so I think that's gonna happen I'm not sure about the Bad Batch I figure either they're going to be captured and imprisoned or killed at some point but I figure imprisoned is is probably gonna be the best way to go for them or what happens so we'll see how that all plays out but this was another stepping stone episode so we'll see what they do from here um, as far as X-Men 97 goes, I had a chance to watch episode 6, Life, Death, or Life, Death Part 2. So this is kind of a two-fold episode because we have on one side Storm getting her powers back, going to the cave with the guy that's protecting her. And then on the flip side, we learn that Professor X is still alive and he's with the Shi'ar, uh, with that queen lady. Um, and then where the... Um, her the queen's wife is the gladiator and all those people and they're still trying to take out the um i think i want to say scrolls yeah the scrolls it was but regardless um so we have professor x still being alive and ultimately wanting to go back to the x-men because he learns about what happened with the sentinels and possibly um mr sinister and all of that so can't wait to see what happens in the next few episodes but um while it was a stepping stone episode we do have a couple of things that were going on in this episode to take us into the rest of the season um now as far as the films that i had the inkling to watch again um so i started with stargate arc of truth um just because i have just in my you know i work on the side i've been um letting stargate sg1 and play in the background 
And while I have nothing against the final couple of seasons with the Ori, I kind of wanted a little bit more or more with the Ancients and going back in time, possibly finding good Ancients versus just the Ori and all of that. Um, but overall, if you want a good summary of the Ori star, or story arc, Arc of Truth actually works out nicely and it's actually more of the ending to the season. So at the end of, I think, season 10 is more like, you know, they escape from the Ori, but the threat is still out there. So Arc of Truth kind of um, resolves all of that. But it's a good um, ending to uh, just a good one off movie as far as spinoffs go. Um, and then I figured I wanted to watch Stargate all over again, the original one. And overall for me it's still fun, it still kind of throws you off when you see a bunch of different actors in a lot of the key roles. So, you know, Daniel Jackson and uh, Colonel O'Neill, um, Catherine Langford, I can always say her last name wrong, but Langford. Um, not seeing Teal or Captain Carter and all, and all of them in there, it kind of throws you off. Same thing with like having General West instead of um, General Hammond, which they explain very well in the Stargate SG-1 season premiere. but. Overall, good films for me. I still enjoy them to the point where I'm actually thinking I'm going to also rewatch um, Continuum because it's a good story arc that finishes off the not only the ghouls as far as Ball goes and being the last system lord, his clones, but also the story arc and the conflict between Colonel and or I guess General Neil and Ball because it starts when he's in that undercover role as a ghoul to save his life, um, escapes, and then Ball has to ask for his help. Colonel O'Neill enjoys it, and then um, when they're at Dakara and they need and um, the Jaffa and the humans need it, Ball's help, so all of that back and forth was overall very well done. It's one of those better story arcs and things that keep on going, so definitely still holds up. So I may end up watching that if there's some time, but um, overall, Stargate and Arc of Truth are worth watching. I still like them. Um, they do what they do best, so Stargate is a good kickoff to Stargate SG-1. Arc of Truth is a good um, finisher to Season 10. And then Continuum is kind of one of those things that... I guess you could kind of put it, I guess, at the end of Season 9 maybe, or along the lines of Season 9, just because you have um, a lot of the new... Well, not really all the new, but you have the... You have Colonel Shepard in the role of commanding SG-1. You still have Colonel Carter and Teal and Daniel Jackson. So that's why it's kind of one of those things that works with Season 9. So um, overall, but for me, it still works. It's still good to see um, and overall worth watching. So definitely, if you're wa doing a rewatch of Stargate SG-1, I st still do definitely recommend starting with Stargate. Once you finish with, I guess, Season 9, then um, watch Continuum, and then once you finish Season 10, watch Arc of Truth, and you get a very complete um, series and season and all of that. It works out very well, so um, definitely recommend all of that. Um, so as far as this week's Android app review, um, you can generally do things, all this in you know your mobile phone of choice, whether it's iOS or Android, but... Um, as we approach the you know general spring months and summer months, everyone starts getting more into fitness and um, getting outdoors and things like that. So one of the apps that I recommend getting if you don't have it already is Google Fit. So the benefit of Google Fit is that it does not require that you have a, a smartwatch or a fitness band or a steps counter or anything like that. You install the app on your device, you give it things like location permission, sensor permissions, and things like that. So as long as the phone is in your pocket, then you can um, uh, count your steps, check how far you've walked, if you're running or jogging or anything like that, you can generally do all those sorts of things. So overall, Google Fit is a very versatile app if you don't want to use a fitness band but if you have one you can connect you know google fit enabled devices to it you can um sync your data into it and things like that if you have a fitbit i'm still a little bit hit or miss as far as getting that to show up in google fit but i do used to also still have the google fit app and i'm signed in with my google account so there's still that you know bit of connectivity um, and if you use the um, app, if you install the app Health Connect, then it all syncs to uh, syncs all that connected data anyway. So it all generally works out um, to keep everything in sync. So for me, I always rec or I recommend Google Fit just because it doesn't require any extra hardware. So if you don't want to spend the money for 
a fitness band, then you can still find a way to measure your steps. Then again, if you don't use headphones and your hands are in your um, if your phone is in your hands all the time, it's not going to be as accurate. But you are saving things like your height and things like that, and your stride and and all that sort of stuff. So you can still keep general track of that. But if you want more accuracy, the phone works best in your pocket. So. Um, Google Fit is a very good fitness app that you know is free to use in the Google Play Store, syncs to your Google account, and you get good things like you know how many steps you took, your heart points earned, uh, distance. You can keep track of stuff. So if you want to um, keep um, an ongo an active log of where you're walking to keep track of your hikes and stuff and your your runs, you can do that. And you can log all sorts of stuff in there, a lot, including various activities like swimming and sports and things like that. So. It is a very uh, versatile app to use if you want to get started in fitness or just have a place to keep log of all that stuff. So with that being said, um, I'm going to round out this episode with my review of the Doom 2 mod of Eternity. So overall, um, it was a very fun mod. It did get really, really hard about halfway through it. So towards the end of the third chapter, um, Crystallina it suddenly had all these um monsters and enemies to fight against so even on the easiest level it was quite a bit so i can only imagine how many there were on the harder difficulty settings but that being said for me as an amateur game player i didn't mind turning on god mode because one of the things that ever eternity strives at is the very beautiful level design and level look and feel themselves so when you're playing the game you while the first chapter in the castle is probably you when you start it you think like okay this is a good um, level design it's actually the least of all of them like they're all designed so well so as you're progressing through the game you get better and better level designs they're more beautiful so um, I've already forgotten what the second one was but when you get to the third one crystalline the fourth one hell and the final one in heaven which is basically like a Roman villa Roman um, structures you have a Heliopolis and all these big structures is very well done so you have you know various maps of various sizes but overall you feel like you're in a very open space and you're you know this kind of doom 2-ish and blocky and all that but you have this open space where you feel like you're very it's a, you're not really cramped up by what is doing like you they took a lot of time to design those levels well they're um, very nicely done the enemies are placed well you have to figure a lot of stuff out so sometimes you have to get keys like the red blue and yellow keys to unlock stuff sometimes you have to press switches to escape sometimes you have to just defeat enemies to open doors so all sorts of different things go on in the levels so definitely worth a play so if you've never played of eternity then i recommend playing it um it does require doom 2 and um um, something that it supports as far as playing mods like gz doom or pr boom but um once you start playing you realize why it does require the latest versions of those um different um, apps just because it has a lot of customizations going on like crystalline as snow hell uses a, a slightly different color map so you have the usual red but you also have a purple accent um the roman um the final chapter which i keep forgetting the name of um, has like this um, pathway that i guess technically you can't fall in but it has this like um pathway with these um broken blocks and squares that you have to cross so that design is very well done um and then you have you know things that you know where you have to go up and down and across different levels and um across like and like the thing in the i want to say it was maybe hell um where you have one you have probably one of the longest levels in doom that i know of at least not to say that i keep track of them all but um it's the fourth map i think in the hell chapter where the part time is 39 minutes but the average play time for most users is about an hour and a half which right there tells you about how long it takes so even doing a google search for the on for the levels when you're searching for that level on youtube like let's say you want to follow along or see how other people have done even like people who i think are good game players for doom it still takes them about an hour to finish so so that's about 20 minutes more than the par now for me it took me about 100 minutes an hour 40 which you'll see on the youtube channel so a little bit more than the average but not too far off so that just tells you how big that level was and this is also with god mode on so i can only imagine how long it would have taken me if it was off so it's one of those things where the level 
in that particular level also was very well done because you're in this really really big factory um you have to go through different areas you have to go through a whole building you have to go up and down like double back go into these other areas like a storage area like catacombs catacombs almost things like that so uh when you're playing the game um the mod overall you're gonna have a lot of different things to go through so um i definitely recommend playing it almost to the point where i kind of want to see what ev eternity 2 is all about and see if it does the same thing i do have another mod on the list so i'm gonna try that out see how it is or at least find out what the story is about it before i check out ev eternity 2 and i do have another gameplay in my mind so i have to decide i'm still in the process of deciding the next gameplay but as far as ev eternity goes if you've never played it, or like me, I've never heard of it, um, when you hear about it and you play it, you'll see just how much thought and design went into it, so I definitely recommend playing it. Um, as of this recording, all the videos are up on the YouTube channel, so you can check out the whole gameplay from map 1 to 30. Um, I didn't get a chance to do the secret level, so they're not in the playlist, but I did have a chance to play everything else, so you can see just how good they were just how good all the designs for everything was and how much they vary but how much good thought process went into it so um to the point where even that finale with that final boss was an interesting design it makes me wish and i can't know i keep saying this but i kind of wish this was also possibly the story for Do like a doom 3 in the old model of making doom games so after the icon of sin having that like archangel thingy um be the follow up to the icon of sin like a corrupted angel would have been an interesting story arc to go with so even if they didn't do all the customizations that the mod um is able to use with all the updates and stuff um even if they had kept you know the general design and not the more advanced stuff just the general basic level designs would have made for a good um doom 3 and a kind of unique boss that's a little bit different than um, what they have and kind of what they did before. So even though you have the Cyber Demon and Spider Mastermind in the first one and the Icon of Sin in the second one, having that Archangel thingy in the final one would have been nice and would have been an interesting thing versus the um, Mother Demon or whatever in Doom 64. Um, Doom 3, I think, had the scientist guy who turned into a demon bat thingy which was kind of weird, but even in Doom 3, if they had done used, it, like if Eternity was the base of Doom 3, which I don't know, the t I think Eternity was released after Doom 3, but if they had done something along the lines of the story arc with what's in Eternity for Doom 3, it probably would have given Doom 3 a bit better reception because you're still sticking to the source material of Doom, but you have this brand new story and uh, all these 3D models and stuff like that to work with. So with that being said, that is all for this particular episode. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything like that, all the um, social media sites I'm on are up on the website at headfullsneal.reviews. All the gameplay videos go up on the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash n one And of course, if you want to support the show, get early access and all of that good stuff, you can support the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash patel n01 so early access to the show add free versions of it a link to the uh, youtube version of it if you prefer that um and all of that good stuff um and like i mentioned in the episode i still haven't decided which gameplay i'm gonna do next i um i'm trying to decide between and i guess i'll say it now of what i'm thinking but um the doom mod that i'm thinking about playing is pina colada which i don't know too much about i just thought that that was an interesting name and some of the visuals look cool, so I'm going to take a look at that. But I'm also thinking of doing a replay of um, Knights of the Old Republic 2, The Sith Lords, with the released content mod. And But I did want to check out some of the additional mods, um, in order to see if there's any interesting mods that are out there as far as um, adjusting the gameplay, graphics, and things like that. But I kind of wanted to play it um, instead of the usual... Um, gameplay of you know treating your character like the exile i kind of wanted to treat it as a continuation of revan's story arc where um because he was um the redeemed revan and he had to go he went into the empire to you know try and take them down but he came back and that's why they treated him as exile or you know the canon story is revan turned back to the light side but let's say he um stayed on the dark side and ultimately came back because the republic defeated him um, regardless of what the events of the end of Knights of the Old Republic 1. 
um, they exile him, take his power, and now you have to rebuild your power and connection to the Force. Um, so I was thinking about doing that, and I didn't I haven't decided on like a um, light side or dark side affinity, but kind of making a strong soldier build and um, taking it from there. So um, that's also up in the air, though. So look out for that coming soon as far as the next gameplay. But um, I did have a, f a fun time playing of Eternity, and I highly recommend it. It's very well done to the point where I'm actually thinking about buying the soundtrack to it because a lot of those um, songs or the background audio was really good for it. So I definitely recommend checking that out too. It's made for a very good, um, fun time because of the music as well on top of the visual designs that the maps had. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comment, feedback, or anything like that, um, all the links and everything are on the website at headphones.reviews. But thanks for tuning into this particular episode and until next time.